What is up, YouTube? My name is Lucy. Welcome to my channel, Uncultured Pearls, where usually I talk about knitting and crochet. But today, I've got a very special episode where I am trying a craft that is totally new to me. I've never done it before, and I am taking you along for the ride. So buckle up, things could get a little crazy. Today, I'm going to be trying diamond painting. I have my package from Diamond Art Club, which arrived on Wednesday. Today finally is Saturday, so I have a chance to crack this thing open and get started. I'm very excited. If any of you aren't familiar with what diamond painting is, it's more or less a color by number but you're not coloring with paint or colored pencils, you're coloring with these little tiny rhinestone pellets. And at the end, once you color everything in, you have this beautiful piece of artwork that you can frame and hang on the wall. And you know, clearly I have a lot of empty space on my wall, so I'm hoping to finish one of these pretty soon so that I can decorate. And I'm hoping as well that it kind of activates the same happy places in my brain as knitting and crochet. So if any of you are knitters and crocheters and you've also done diamond painting, let me know. Leave a comment. Tell me, have you done it? Do you like it? Does it bring you the same peace and kind of meditation factor as knitting does? And uh, also, if you're a fan of knitting in general or a fan of diamond painting, hit subscribe so you can see my future videos on these topics and hopefully I will get better since right now I'm a total rookie at diamond painting. But let's get right into it. I have my knife here. I'm going to cut into the package. This is my first unboxing on YouTube. So, don't know what I'm doing, but ooh, let's see, okay. I did end up getting two kits because, of course, I'm a sucker for a buy one, get one 50% off, and that's the deal they had going. So I figured, why not? All right, so here's the kits. I got two different sizes. So this big one I got is, can you see it? The Lover's Tree by Raven Felon. Felon, I'll, I'll list everything in the description. By the way, I am not sponsored by Diamond Art Club. So this is my completely unbiased uh, well, sort of review. I don't know if I will know enough by the end of this to actually review them, but it's, I'm not going in this with any biases toward the company. The one thing I will say in favor of them that I found out from watching another YouTube channel, which I will link below, it's called Diamonds and Washi, I think is the name of her channel. And uh, I was just watching for a little bit of background and she said a thing to watch out for is copyright infringement in diamond painting manufacturers. So you want to look for a kit that states the name of the artist, like this one says by Raven Felon on it. And that means that the art is licensed and that artist is getting a certain percentage of the profits of every sale of the kit. So you know that you're supporting the artist if you're buying a kit that states the name of the artist. And um, this other YouTuber that I just mentioned, she says that all of the Diamond Art Club kits are properly licensed. And so you know you're safe buying these, you're not accidentally infringing on anybody's copyright. And then the other one I got is Rad Tiger by Vincent Trinidad. And I thought this one was very 
80s-tastic, you know? And I might start on this one first. This one is smaller than the other one, so I figure it's kind of less pressure. I'll finish it faster and I'll get a sense of whether I actually like doing this. <laughs> and I think the art, I, I mean, I love both of these designs, but this tiger would look great in my office at work. It would be kind of like a non-professional touch to my kind of boring professional office so I'm hoping to finish this bad boy and hang it up at work so okay there's the initial unboxing now it's time to get into the actual kit I think I'm gonna crack it open set it up on the table and then I'll bring you over there and uh, let's get started Okay, first I have to move my plants off my table since this is the only table that I have in my one bedroom apartment and there's no space with my planties. So here's my African violet. My parents got me that for my birthday, love that. Uh, my amaryllis, which was supposed to bloom by Christmas, but it never did and we're in the last week of January now, but look, there's a little bloom, it's, it's gonna happen. And then my bonsai tree, which I almost killed by bringing it to work and I don't have a window in my office, but I brought it back home and put it by the window and it's still alive. But I'm going to move these three buddies over to my kitchen island so they'll hang out there while I'm working on this new project of mine. All right, here we are at my table. It's a very old table, so ignore all of this craziness. It's been very well loved. So I took the plastic off of the box. I'm gonna crack it open and see what's in here. Ooh, okay, we've got a oh, tool kit. Okay, imagine that's useful. Oh, it's a sticker of the image I'm gonna make. That's also cool. Uh, ooh, this appears to be the canvas. Okay, great. Oh, and that's it. Okay, so we'll put the box down. And let's open up this canvas. How does this work? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay. Ooh, yes. Okay, 80s tiger, I see you. All right. Oh, we got a nice little thank you for your purchase. You're welcome, Diamond Art Club. Oh, we got some tips and tricks. I'm sure that'll come in handy. Oops, uh, ah, I guess this is just sort of a backup of the symbol keys. I guess you could, oh, you can, ah, I see. You can use these to label your extra drills. So that's the technical term for these rhinestone things. They're called drills, and each color has a different number. And so if you, once you pour them out of these little baggies and you wanna keep them in something else, you can use these to label the, uh, the containers that you have. That's really awesome. Speaking of containers, the one other thing that I bought to get started is a set of these little screw top jars. I figured these were gonna be a mess if they were all over the place and you know, trying to put them back in little Ziplocs would be hard. So I bought a set of these. Obviously, I, I think there's more colors than containers that I bought, but this will get me started and I'll decide if I like this style. 
and I'll either buy more of these or I'll buy something else to keep everything organized. But let's open up this. How do I do this? They're so sparkly. This probably isn't even showing up on camera. Wow, okay, there's so many of them and this is the smaller of the kits that I bought. This is gonna be quite an experience. Okay, this is overwhelming. We'll set these over here. Let's open up the toolkit, shall we? gonna turn into an ASMR channel with all these like crinkly noises. Okay, we got the drill pen. So this is the tool that you actually use to put the little rhinestones in place. This is, ah, little Ziplocs. Okay, so I can use these when I run out of my containers, I'll use these for now. And Just kind of pour this all out. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't even know what some of this is. Oh my gosh. Okay, I might have to read the instructions on this. Some kind of tape with a cat on it? Can you see that? Huh. I'll have to read and see what this is. Oh, does it say? Ah, let's read this. Okay, applicator, that must be this. Comfort grip, okay, we'll put that on. Heart-shaped wax container, boom, got it. Craft tray, there it is. Ooh, there's little sparkles in the tray, can you see? Like, it's sparkly, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting distracted. Tray stopper, huh, is that already? in place, yeah, okay, that's that little thing. I guess this works as a funnel if you take that out so that you can um, pour all the drills into one of your containers when you're done working with that color. Let's see, multi-placer, okay, that's these little things so you can place multiple drills at one time. Washi tape, okay, so this is washi tape. What I do with it, no clue. And Ziploc baggies. Okay, so then what is this? Anyone? Leave me a comment. What do I do with this? <laughs> no clue. Is this a magnet? No? Okay, well, let's not break it, Lucy. Let's just put it down until we know what we're doing. Okay, I'm gonna organize myself for a minute. I'll be back when I'm actually getting started. Okay. I think I'm going to start with the tiger's ear. I'm going to start right here. In theory, I would start with some of this black, but that's not going to show up on camera, like, at all. And I think this part is a purpley color, but let's find out. And the way you find out is you look at the symbol of the little dot where you're going to place a drill. And this is kind of a burgundy background with a white circle and a T in the middle. And then you go over here to the key and you find that symbol. Aha, here it is right there. And you look at the color code next to it. So that's 915. So that means I need to find the packet that is labeled 915. Let's see, can I do that? Um, let's see. Not in 
that strip. much searching I have found the little baggie of drills labeled 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 915 so this is the color I need to use for this uh crap I need scissors okay one sec okay got it so I'm gonna cut here oh I guess I think they're perforated. I maybe could have just ripped this, but that's fine. Humans have evolved to use tools. Okay, so let me move all of these. Okay, I have turned my canvas sideways just so I can lay the whole thing out. And now I'm going to open up my pack of drills. And pour them into the tray. Oh, whoop, I already lost one. Okay, get back in there. Oh my gosh, they kind of Stuck in there. Okay. There we go. Here they are. And as you can see, hopefully you can see, uh, these are round drills. So they come in two options. There's round and there's square. And so these are shaped like little circles, but obviously the square ones are shaped like little squares. And it's kind of personal preference. There are pluses and minuses to both says the internet. Uh, the other kit that I bought, I believe, has square drills. So I'll try that next time, but for now we're doing round. And I guess what you're supposed to do is kind of shake the tray so that they line up. Oh, there's one. Okay, because you want them to line up in the little grooves. Ooh, that's pretty. So that you can kind of pick them up with your tool. And speaking of that, I need to get my tool ready with some wax. So how do I open this? Oh, <laughs> that was easy. Okay, so I think I just kind of dip this in here. Okay, that did nothing. Maybe let's... Uh, let's kind of go for the underneath one so I can press against it better. So I'm just going to press in. Okay, that Still didn't work. Okay, I got a little bit in there. Let's go again. Oh. <laughs> There's a piece of plastic between these. Okay. Well, change of plans. Let's leave that one for later since maybe the plastic keeps them separated nicely. And we'll go back to this top one. Is there plastic on this? Yes, there is. Okay. So, that was a learning experience. You have to peel up the plastic to get to the wax. And then it very easily gets in your tool. Okay. This is why I do these things for you guys. Now you know. Okay, I think that's probably good. I mean, there's wax on there. Cool, so we'll close this up. Keep that nice for later. 
And then I have to peel back this. Oh man, so the surface here comes with an adhesive already on it that is apparently super sticky. So I'm just gonna peel it back so that I can get to this area and then I'll be able to press it back on later to keep the adhesive nice and sticky for the future. So, okay. You probably can't see this hardly at all because it's clear, but okay, I've pulled it down so it's right about here and I've got access to this area that I wanna do. So I'm just gonna grab one of these Oh, okay, that worked. Can you see? It's, you can't see, I'm not in the frame. Uh, it, oops, okay. It's stuck right there to the end of my tool. So I'm just gonna press it. Boop. Oh, okay, now I think I might be diamond painting, you guys. Let's do it, okay. I'm not steady enough for this. Let's put the tray down. After I like dropped two or three on my table over here. I'm such an amateur, you guys. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. Now we're cooking with gas, okay. Okay, I'm like not being the best about placing these right in the center, so I need to be careful. I feel like they're gonna look weird when they're all placed down and they're kind of like jiggity jagged. So I'm kind of giving it a little nudge with my tool once I place it down if I'm not quite happy with where I've placed it. But I mean, I think this is going pretty well, right? And I do see how this could get highly addicting. You know, you just want to finish one area and then all of a sudden three hours have passed. Well, look at that. I think this is going well. I'm going to finish up this area and maybe these little areas, and then I'll switch to another color and I'll be back when it's time to do that. All right, it's been a few minutes and I have finished this area of that color. Now I'm going to attempt to funnel these into one of my containers. Now, because I don't trust myself, I'm gonna just Cover up the adhesive because I figure it would be bad if I spilled these all over the adhesive and they were stuck forever. I mean, not forever. I guess I could pry them off, but um, okay. How do I open this? Ah, okay. Just pull that little stopper out. And then to open my jar and oh gosh, see I dropped a couple. It was a good thing I closed that. Get in there little guys. Okay, 
And let's see, I dropped one, two, three, four, five. All right, that's not bad. And then I'll close this up so they're safe. And then I think this is a sticker. I'm hoping I'm going to try to use this and stick it on the top. There we go. So I know what color this is for the next time I need it in the pattern. So the next color I'm going to work on, ooh, let me put this back in before I forget. Great, okay. The next color I think I'm gonna do is this right here, a little circle with an A in the middle. And looking on my chart, that appears to be number 775. So let me find it. Here we are, 775. You can barely see that on the ca camera, can you? But trust me, it's 775. I'm going to separate it. Now there seems to be more of these than the previous color that I used. I probably do not need all of these in the tray. So I think what I'm going to do is put most of them directly into one of this con these containers and just put a little bit in the tray. So let's see how that goes. Maybe we'll kind of just not open it so crazy and like that honestly is more than i need and then oh my gosh i almost just dumped them everywhere oops i dropped one on my chair this is like not a tidy hobby i will say Oh, and uh, now I think it's gone forever, <laughs> so that's fine. Nope, I rescued it. Okay, there we go. And I actually see that there's one incorrect color in here. Can you see that? Boop, there's a dark guy. We'll just take him oh. Take him out and uh, put him in the trash or something, unless I can figure out what color he's supposed to go in. And before I forget, what was it, 775? We will put the label on this so that I don't get really confused. So 775. It's actually really nice that these come with labels. Cool. Okay, set that part aside and then we will get back to painting. I'll kind of shake these out. Okay, that's good enough. And peel this back again. All right, so now I'm going for these with the A symbol. Nice. Oops, see, I haven't put these quite lined up 100%. I guess 
I'm new at this. I gotta cut myself some slack, right? Oops, I almost put it on that X symbol. That's not correct. Okay, so I originally, I had not really seen the difference between the A's and the X's. It's probably not showing up that well on camera, but actually that was the entire A part that I needed to do right there. And then there's another two little swatches over on these parts. But a lot of it is actually the X symbol, which is a different color. We're cool, everything's fine. Oops, accidentally picked up two. Ah, oh, now my wax has come off. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, there I got one. So this is really fun. I have realized that already, but I have also realized how huge this thing is. And this is the smaller of the two that I bought. I wonder how many hours it takes to do one of these. I mean, do any of you guys do these routinely? Like how long? I think if I had to estimate Oh, maybe like a hundred hours for one? I could be wrong. Oh, okay, so I finished the A's right here. So I'm gonna go over to this last part. Push these a little bit better. Okay. Great, that is all the A's. So we finished the second color. I think what I'm gonna do is work on this a little bit more off camera and then uh, before the end of the day I'll come back and show you guys the progress that I've made on my first day of diamond painting. Hello folks, welcome back. It's been a few hours and this is my progress. I finished the little ear wispy things that I had started with you guys. And then I cracked open the black and started working on the massive areas of black that is going to make up the majority of this piece. But I think with that you can really see the sparkle going on. When this thing is done, it's going to be ultra sparkly. 
And let's see, did I learn anything from this so far? Like any tips to share with you guys? Um, I mean, probably not yet. <laughs> Clearly, a couple hours of diamond painting is not going to be enough to become an expert. I also didn't even try doing the multi-placer yet. I was just enjoying doing single placements. It was kind of like I got in the zone and I'm just like boop, boop, one after the other. And um, yeah, it was very fun so far, off to a great start. I would revise my estimate for time for finishing the whole thing as well. If this was like a couple hours of work to do this much, I'm betting I could finish the whole thing in like 20 hours, maybe. I guess we'll see, though I'm not meticulously gonna keep track or anything. And with that, let's go back to the couch for some final thoughts. There you have it, folks. Thank you for joining me on this journey to attempt my first ever diamond painting. I had a lot of fun. I'm definitely going to keep going with it. Um, I will film an update later uh, and I'll also mention it on my knitting podcast, which I film about every two weeks. So if you want to see what happens with this 80s-tastic tiger, then maybe check those out. If you're not at all into knitting and you're just a diamond painting fan, th those videos might not be for you. But I will film a dedicated diamond painting update uh, so that you can see my progress. And uh, I definitely think I'm going to get it framed and hang it up in my office. But like I said, thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you've stuck around for this whole video, please hit subscribe. That would really help out my channel. If I've inspired you to give diamond painting a shot, go for it and let me know in the comments. All right, I hope you all have a fabulous sparkly day and I'll see you in the next one.